There is something more supernatural on the drawing board at CERN than what is being admitted. Even Adam Barker of Tech Bubble wrote of CERN a while back that with the LHC, CERN are expecting to find other dimensions and open portals to these dimensions. Uh, if you have the image of Stargate in your head right now, you're spot on. That's what he said. Now, prophecy in numerous parts of the Bible refer to a coming day when portals will be opened and spiritual entities are going to pass through and come to the earth. Collider, the LHC, is the largest single machine in the world located on the border of France and Switzerland. Uh, its stated purpose is to accelerate subatomic particles by the speed of light and force them to travel in a loop where they then collide. The secular media, rife with non-believers, scientists, atheists, and skeptics of the supernatural, have also all been in a buzz uh, over the global discussion around CERN, CERN's seemingly paranormal associations. Um, although CERN doesn't publicly profess to an agenda in relationship to God or Satan, evil versus good, the spiritual realm, as it would be described by Bible believers and so on. Recall what some say was just a CERN ritual hoax, which involved video footage depicting what looks like an occult ritual with a group of people all dressed in black cloaks surrounding the statue of the Hindu diva, uh, deity Shiva at CERN. And well, it, what appears to be stabbing a woman to death in a human sacrifice. The video ends with the uh, videographer crying out and running away. And of course, when the film became public, experts at CERN said it was all just a joke. Um, but all this does suggest there is something more supernatural on the drawing board at CERN than what is being admitted. Even Adam Barker of Tech Bubble wrote of CERN a while back that with the LHC, CERN are expecting to find other dimensions and open portals to these dimensions. Uh, if you have the image of Stargate in your head right now, you're spot on, that's what he said. And then he went on to draw parallels to the biblical story of Jacob's ladder. Um, perhaps you remember the dream that the patriarch Jacob had um, as he was fleeing his brother Esau. Jacob leaves Beersheba, uh, he's on his way to Haran, and he comes to a certain place and he stays there that night because the sun had set. Um, taking one of the stones of the place, he puts it under his head, he lays down that place to go to sleep, and as he dreams, it says, behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then Jacob wakes up from his sleep and he says, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Um, and he was afraid. And he says, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven, Genesis uh, 28. Now this ladder uh, described in the first book of the Bible describes something like a portal from heaven to earth through which God's angels, interdimensional and spiritual beings from another reality were traveling. Um, when Jacob wakes up, he refers to the location as a gate, much like today's trendy terms, gateway or stargate. Uh, one of CERN's goals is to recreate Jacob's Ladder, according to uh, Barker, and to reopen a portal that is said to have existed between Earth, Mars, Venus, and Saturn when the planets were in alignment many years ago. But whether Jacob's Ladder really existed, he says, CERN are pretty sure that other dimensions do, and they're making it their goal to ensure that they open the portal for their use. Who knows? Now, Sergio Bertolucci, who is the official director for research and scientific computing at CERN, he was asked a while back about this extra dimensional doorway by the Register, which is a London and New York operated science and technology jour journal. And he didn't hesitate with an enlightening response. He said, yes, 
out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. And that sounds eerily similar to what Jesus said in uh, John 1 51, when he said, truly, truly, I say unto you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. Now, prophecy in numerous parts of the Bible refer to a coming day when portals will be opened and spiritual entities are going to pass through and come to the earth. Now, if that's true, and if those verses are accepted for their literal meaning and not written off as some kind of poetic allegory, as some scholars have claimed, then the idea of CERN playing with gateways is a major concern. And if, as CERN claims, they're only out to explore space, time, matter, particles, and the origin of our known universe and planets from exclusively a scientific or Darwinian-related perspective, if their agenda is unrelated to Bible prophecy entirely, then what is it with all this mystical sim symbolism that they knowingly are associating themselves with? Wouldn't it be more appropriate for them just to proudly display a polished statue of a particle or some artist depiction of the Big Bang instead of the statue of Shiva? So for those who have not yet um, heard about this controversial piece of art that CERN proudly exhibits between buildings 39 and 40 near the main uh, building of their operation, it stands as really the most visible and celebrated imagery behind their work, Shiva. This is the Hindu god of destruction and uh, a symbol of Shakti or the life force. Um, he is known very well as the destroyer. And in fact, in 2004, the government of India, which has had a long-standing friendship with leaders behind the CERN project, even before the completion of the Large Hadron Collider, they gifted CERN with this bronze work of an art uh, depicting Shiva as uh, not a Raja, the lord or sometimes king of the dance. This dance that Shiva performs uh, uh, in the uh, sculpture is the one that provides the source of the creation cycle in Hindu mythology, the preservation of all life and existence and the termination of all life and existence. The Rudra Tandava is a dance that especially displays Shiva's um, sadistic personality as he rains down the ultimate destruction upon a weary planet. Now, from the unveiling of this Nataraja on CERN grounds, controversy's been launched from all sides, including irreligious groups, uh, with questions uh, as to CERN's motive in its exhibition. So far, CERN's response has just most often pointed to the, to the notion that the statue was simply a gift to an international and multicultural scientific institution, and they show uh, it there on their property as an act of gratitude. But if pure appreciation were the only contributing factor, the implications behind the symbolism might continue to disturb, disturb some, uh, but it's likely that the issue would at least be dropped by many irreligious groups that uh, could find within themselves to accept the motive that's being put forward by CERN. The, uh, the plaque at the side beside the statue, however, reads in part, hundreds of years ago, Indian artists created visual images of dancing Shivas in a beautiful series of bronzes. In our time, physicists have used the most advanced technology to portray the patterns of the cosmic dance. The metaphor of the cosmic dance thus unifies ancient mythology, religious art, and modern physics. So right there out in the open for all to see is a direct correlation between the Hindu perception of Shiva hundreds of years ago, which is the concept of destroyer uh, that I explained a moment ago, and our time unifying, quote, ancient mythology, religious art, and modern physics. Additionally, and perhaps even more important, there's a significant section of CERN that is built upon the St. Genus Poili, which is a commune in Ain, uh, a department of France. In Roman times, the St. Genus Poili was called Apaliacum, 
Uh, the name Poili comes from the Latin apaliacum with the Latin suffix lacum, which den denoted possession. Um, but the town and a temple were dedicated there in ancient times to Apollyon, the destroyer, the Shiva Horus, if you will. Apollyon uh, is also the angel of the bottomless pit, referred to in Revelation 9-11. Of course, I can only speculate, um, but I note the connection between Nimrod, Apollo, and Abaddon, Apollyon at CERN, and the history of the region uh, are all highly curious. Apollo was worshiped by the Romans of that area as well as the Greeks and in central France. Apollo was equated with the Celtic god Atep Omerus. Um, these two characters were combined to create Apollo Atep Omerus, which can be translated as great horseman or possessing a great horse. In the Celtic belief, horses were closely related to the sun. The interesting thing to note is the connection between this idea of Apollo being associated with horses in France, uh, where part of the LHC and CERN resides, and what the book of Revelation states about Abaddon, where it says, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon." End quote. I also note that Revelation chapter 9, after describing how these devil worshipers will be judged during the great tribulation period, it ends in verse 21 saying, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, which is the Greek pharmakia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Now, pharmakia is the word that describes the ancient occultic effort to use mind-expanding drugs during rituals in order to open a doorway for making contact with unseen supernatural entities. So, given these descriptions, is it possible that CERN will have something to do with the opening of the bottomless pit described in Revelation 9?